Hey guys, welcome to BMW Blog YouTube channel and welcome to Chicago. I am here today on the press days for the new Chicago Auto Show 2023 and of course I have some BMWs to show you. To start off in this video, I'm going to focus on the brand new BMW X1. Right behind me you have the new X1, this is the U11 generation. You can see right here painted in Pythonic blue brand new design you've seen the car before we had a chance to test it but now i'm kind of just kind of walk around kind of show you the design inside and out and talk more about the specs so let's start at the front as i said brand new design it is still a front wheel drive architecture but of course the design has changed a little bit more compared to the outgoing model kinney grills a little bit larger than before of course they got those vertical slats open slats basically to help with engine cooling brand new headlights new light graphics inside as you can see they're kind of inverted from what you see usually on bmw cars they're quite sleek actually compared to the ongoing model as well this is the non-m sport line so basically you're not getting that aggressive front bumper of course if you want to go sportier you can always get the m sport package large air openings on both sides of course that helps with cooling and aerodynamics too and if we look at the hood also you can see for the first time the x1 featuring a very aggressive design as you can see those two creases running across from top to bottom it is quite sporty and this is something you usually see on sportier cars especially from the m brand now if we move to the side i'm going to show you a little bit more from the side view because the car has changed a little bit as well let's start off first with the wheels for the first time, the BMW X1 can be ordered with very large wheels. If I recall correctly, if you spec them from the M Performance Cadillac, you can go up to 22 inch. Brand new spokes design. Of course, there are multiple choices when it comes to the wheel design. This is a very sport bicolor look. Quite cool to see that. You have ceramic gray mirror caps right here. Matches quite nicely with the Pythonic blue color. For the first time the x1 also has flush door handles so you can see you don't have the usual pull that you would see on other bmws this is kind of typical to what you would see on the i4 now and even on the ix side view if you take a look at the overall shape it looks more of a crossover than before the x1 always looks more of a combination between a hatch and a crossover but right now you can see the roof line kind of sloping down here and it gives you more of a coupe-ish look of course you have this massive roof spoiler right there helps with downforce too typical bmw broad shoulders you know it's not an m car but you're getting some really nice shoulders right here so you can see them kind of sticking out and giving the car a wide look we're going to take a look at that from behind of course you have this l-shaped bmw taillights nothing new there it's always got that l shape pointing upwards nicely sculpted so you can see right here it's got a very kind of 3d design with really nice inner graphics inside let me see if i can turn them on so you can see the graphics on the side as well and of course you got this sculpted piece in there very cool looking lights actually probably one of my favorites on the current bmw lineup now, if you look from the back, you can see the car is quite wide. As I mentioned, despite not being an M car, it's got some really nice shoulders here. So if you see the car from behind, you will notice how wide it actually is compared to the outgoing model. For the first time, there are no more tailpipes. So I believe only the X1 M35i, which will be unveiled later this year, will feature some quad pipes. But this one, it's all clean here. Very clean diffuser with no tailpipes. Uh, that's something that we've seen on the iX1 as well, of course, because that's an all-electric car. This is the only model offered in the US, the 28i. And I believe the MSRP starts at about $37,000. But of course, if you add some options and features like on this one, you can go up to about $47,000. So it is not quite cheap. Now, speaking of the 28i, it is powered by the same B48 2.0 liter four-cylinder engine. It makes about 241 horsepower in this particular car and about 295 pounds-feet of torque. Uh, that's enough to take the car from 0 to 60 to 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in about 6.2 seconds. Not the fastest, not the slowest, but good enough for a crossover that you will use mostly to drive in city traffic. So with that being said, let's take a look inside because I believe the X1 really stands out when you look at the interior features because it has changed quite a bit compared to the outgoing model. So let's go take a look. All right, so inside the new BMW X1. And as I said, things have changed 
quite a bit in here. So let's start with the very large curved display. There are actually two screens connected together. Once again, no surprise there. You've seen this on the i4, iX7 series, even on the new M3 and M4. So everything seems to be going towards that direction. Of course, it's iDrive 8. So um, because of that, you are losing some of the physical buttons that you might be used to it. Uh, you can see here a very clean design, but unfortunately, if you want to control some of the AC features right now, you only have the option either to do that by voice or by touch. It is not the best implementation. I've said it before because you do have to go into the drive menu and adjust those things that you can see basically there. The problem is that if you're uh, static, it's no issue. It's easy to do so. If you're driving and you need to take your eyes off the road, even for a split second to adjust that, it is not very convenient. Of course, BMW says that you can always use the uh, voice commands and I've done it before. They work decently, so that's an option, but I still would love to see the physical switches here in order to quickly adjust the AC. Now, moving on, you're getting a really nice steering wheel. No surprises there. BMW is quite known for offering some really beefy and very cool looking steering wheels. You can see a really nice spokes in here. Looks quite premium, especially when you compare this to the outgoing X1. Southern console has been redesigned and of course you might notice right away that you are losing the iDrive knob, the iDrive controller. Uh, it's again one of those things that we got used to it. I remember driving the car and always kind of reaching towards here, trying to kind of, you know, change the menu options and all of that. But unfortunately that's gone, so you will have to control some of the features from the iDrive 8. Uh, the shifter has changed a little bit too. I mean, not a little bit, but I would say probably quite a bit because it's got just a little, little toggle switch here compared to the kind of beefy knob that you had before. So once again, the idea here is to really keep it uh, very simple, very clean and minimalistic. As you can see right here underneath, you're also getting some additional space. So it's got this, you know, floating split design of the armrest. The idea is to really um, allow passengers to store more things underneath here. You got two split cup holders, of course, you need that in a crossover, in an SUV. Plenty of USB-C ports. It's a family car in the end, so you have to have USB ports all around in, or in order to charge uh, your devices. Another cool implementation actually in the X1, it's the addition of a vertical wireless charging. If you recall from other BMWs, they're all kind of horizontal and it's not very useful because first of all, you can't really see your screen at any time. You always got to kind of reach in there to adjust the, um, uh, the phone or pick it up. And you can see right here, if you do, you know, if you take my phone and you just drop it in there, basically just put it on top and that's that so really cool implementation i really like this hopefully we see this in other crossovers as well if you look at the door handles of course brand new design you got this really beefy handle um, i actually like this one it looks quite premium of course it's kind of like plasticky but something you would expect to see in an x1 this is not a uh, top of the line suv within the bmw lineup if you want more premium materials you can always go for an x5 you know x6 or x7 once again here, we got a black painted piano, black plastic. Once again, not very premium, but as I said, expected to see this in the X1. So this is the front cabin design of the X1, but now I'm gonna go in the back because you might be wondering how much space you actually have. But before I do that, let me just adjust the seat to my normal driving position. I'm about 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 tall. That's about 1.9 meters tall. And this is my, I would say, right now will be my normal driving position this would be the correct one so with this seat set at this uh, particular stage then i can go in the back and kind of show you how much knee room i have how much headroom and also elbow room as well so let's go take a look back seat of the bmw x1 so once again as i said the driving position is set to my height 6263 and even with that being set in that position you can see there have decent knee room of course it does touch a little bit but there is a kind of like a sculpted design in the back of the front seat so that allows for a little bit maybe like an inch of additional knee room of course if you're on the shorter side you will have no issues sitting here if you're on the taller side you will definitely touch your knees against the front seat of course you do have the option to move it a little bit forward or maybe sit a little bit more upright uh, but just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like um, based on my personal height 
Now, when it comes to headroom, plenty of headroom here. You can see at least the palms about five inches. It's also a soft roof line right here. So uh, there is plenty of room there. Side room also seems to be decent, especially since the doors are kind of sculpted inside. It's something that we've seen on most of the new BMWs, including the XM and the X7. So you have plenty of elbow room. And of course, you can have another passenger with you. There is an option for a third person sitting in between the two of you. And uh, of course, that will make things a little bit more um, tight in here. So uh, this is not probably the best car to take for a very long trip with three people. But if you want to move around town, I would say it should be all right. As I mentioned earlier, plenty of USB-C ports. You got a couple right here. Once again, it's expected, especially if you use this as a family car and you have kids traveling with you, you want to be able to charge devices or any other things they might have. Also, one other interesting thing in the X1, as you can see, the rear bench is kind of tilted backwards a little bit. I believe there is an additional adjustment. I'm not sure if it's available in the US or only for the European cars, but you can adjust the, um, the tilt a little bit. So with that being said, let me hop outside. Let's go to the front one more time and talk a little bit about the X1 and how it drives. And then we can jump to the next BMW here at the Chicago Auto Show. Come join me. All right, so this is the 2023 BMW X1 xDrive 28i. Naturally, I'm not gonna have a chance to drive you today, but I did drive the car in Germany and also Nico drove the car a couple of times and we published our review. So I can kind of summarize that quickly. It is still a front wheel drive car. Of course, this is an all wheel drive. The driving nature of the car will mimic that of a front wheel drive. So of course, you're not gonna get that playful rear end kind of steering that you will see, uh, for example, let's say uh, in a four series uh, that's based on a rear wheel drive architecture. But nonetheless, this is a quite good implementation of that front wheel drive in the X1. It's also quite fun to drive because 241 horsepower, it's not too bad actually in a car of this size. There is a little bit of a turbo lag that we've noticed when we uh, when you start to roll the car a little bit, but once you go past that second then the car really kicks in and then the turbos also kick in so you're getting additional power and it's quite fun to drive. Of course, because this one doesn't have the M Sport package, you're missing the shift paddles. And that's something that I often like to have in a car because I like to kind of roll my own gears, even though it's automatic and this one doesn't have it. But if you want to get those, you can get them with the M Sport package. Uh, as I said, cargo space, it's similar to the previous generation. No major improvement there. And once again, you have the option to go to an X3 or an X5 if you need more room or if you want a rear wheel drive based uh, BMW SUV. Once again, pricing starts at about $37,000. Spec right here, almost $47,000. And this is one of the base colors that's offered for the X1, Pythonic Blue. There are a bunch of other colors, of course, as you would expect to see in a car in this range. So with that being said, once again, thanks for watching our review. Thanks for subscribing and come join me in the next video from the Chicago Auto Show 2023. See you soon.